Okay, welcome back. So we're going to take a look at another double triangle congruence problem. Remember, anytime you have a double triangle congruence problem, the main theme of the problem is going to be to find a pair of congruent triangles and then use those triangles to get a missing piece of information about a different set of triangles. So let's take a look at what's going on in this proof. We have this picture. We're given that AE is congruent to EC and FE congruent to EG. So as always, you want to start off by marking up your picture. Put down what you have. AE congruent to EC, FE congruent to EG. Now hopefully, if you look at this picture, there should be something jumping off the page at you. I don't know if you see it, but I'm hoping that you see vertical angles right here. AEG and CEF. These angles are formed by intersecting lines, which makes them vertical angles, and as you know, vertical angles are congruent. That's great, because what's that going to give us? Side, angle, side on these two triangles. So let's go ahead and start there. We want to say in step two, angle AEG and angle CEF are vertical angles. How do we know that? Well, two intersecting lines form vertical angles. And that's really handy because once we say they're vertical angles, it's easy for us to say now that these two angles are congruent because vertical angles are congruent. So angle AEG is congruent to angle CEF. Why? Vertical angles are congruent. Well, look what we have now. Side, angle, side. We've just shown these two angles to be congruent which gives us now those two triangles, AEG and CEF, congruent triangles by side angle side. So let's put that in. Once we have those two triangles, that's the first part of our proof. Get a set of triangles congruent. Now what we need to look for is how can we get DC congruent to AB? You want to ask yourself, what triangles would I like to know are congruent? Well, if you want DC congruent to AB, then probably you're thinking to yourself, gee, if I knew those large triangles were congruent, I'd be in business. And that's exactly what you should be looking at right now. If we had triangle AEB, congruent to triangle CED, then we'd be fine. We can say this by CPCTC. So let's start by drawing those separately and let's mark up our picture. What do we know about them? Well, first of all, we have these two triangles formed by intersecting lines. This is D, C, E, B, and A. In the givens, we were told a little bit about these triangles already. We know that AE is congruent to EC. But that's really all we know. So we want to look for something in our congruent triangles that we can use to help us with these two triangles here. Do you see it? There's a piece that overlaps in those two triangles. Hopefully you're seeing that this angle down here and this angle up here are the same in our large triangles as they are our small triangles. That's what we're going to use. So we can come up here and by CPCTC, say that angle A is congruent to angle C because they're opposite congruent sides in the triangle. But that's exactly the same angle A and angle C as we have down there. So things are looking up already. We have an angle, we have a side. If only we had another angle, we'd have angle side angle. You see one? Well, hopefully you do right there. These are intersecting lines, which means you have vertical angles. So we're going to be able to say that this angle here is congruent to this angle here, DEC and DEA, and that will give us angle side angle. So let's put this together. Step five, we need to say a couple of things in this proof. 
One thing we need is that angle A is congruent to angle C. That's a CPCT states that. So I'm going to put it right here underneath my congruent triangles so it makes sense where I'm getting it from. CPCTC on these two triangles right there. Well, now I need to set myself up for vertical angles. Vertical angles takes two steps. You have to tell me they are vertical angles, and then tell me they're congruent. So, angle DEC and angle DEA are vertical angles. Two lines intersect to form vertical angles. And then that's great because vertical angles are congruent. So you can tell me angle BEC congruent to angle BEA because vertical angles are congruent. Well, let's take inventory. What do we have now? We have A and C congruent by CPCTC. We have DEC and BEA congruent by reason of vertical angles. So now we have angle, side, angle on these two large triangles. And that's what we need. So we can go ahead and now say triangle DEC is congruent to triangle BEA by reason of angle, side, angle. Well, we're basically done now, aren't we? We wanted to show that DC is congruent to AB. We've just shown these two large triangles congruent. Well, DC is opposite this angle, which is congruent to this angle, which is opposite AB. That makes DC and AB corresponding parts of congruent triangles. And as you know, those are congruent. So we get to finish our proof now by saying DC congruent to AB by reason of C, P, C, T, C. Put a proof box if you're feeling good, and you're done. So remember, all you need to do with these double triangle congruence problems is look for a pair of triangles you can get congruent. Might be a small pair, might be a large pair. It doesn't matter. Look for something. Once you get those triangles congruent, the idea is to use a piece of them that overlaps with another triangle. In this case, our little triangles shared these common angles, A and C, with the large triangles that we needed. And that's all we needed. A and C congruent by CPCTC. Vertical angles gives us angle, side, angle. And then we get what we want, CPCTC. Thanks as always for watching. If you have any questions or concerns, write in. If there's a problem you'd like to see me do, let me know in class or send it in. I'll be happy to help you out. Hope this helps. Have a great night. Thanks for watching.